come to say thank you. Thank you for who you are and what you are in our life. You are the true and living God. There is no other God like you in none of the earth. I thank you, God, for allowing me to represent you here at this time and in this space. So I pray, God, that you use me for your glory. And anything in me that will try to steal the glory that belongs to you, let it die in Jesus' name. And if I refuse to let go of that which tries to steal your glory, let me come to my demise. That absolutely no weapon formed against your plan for your children will ever prosper. Let the word that's spoken fall deep into the hearts of your children, that they may hear, understand, and do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Put your Bibles in your hand. Make this bold and powerful declaration. This is my Bible. Is my Bible. I, am I am what it says I am. I, I can do I what it says I can do. I Today, Today, I will be taught the word of faith. I will hear, understand, and do the word of faith. I have a pastor anointed to teach me the word of faith. I will follow my pastor as my pastor follows Christ. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. Thank you so much for helping me during my mental block there. Amen. For God is yet good and he is so worthy to be praised. There is none like him. He is not to be compared to any other. Amen. All right, what happened here? Amen. Amen. I'll give me a minute here. My granddaughter had my iPad. I don't know this one. All right, we back in action. I I want to produce a winner so bad. Someone that, that's not just going to be mediocre. Just average. You know, um, I, I, I hear different things and I understand people's position and but you have to understand that there is no multiple roads to success. If you study success and success is defined differently by all of us because we have different goals, different ambitions, there's always some main ingredients you just cannot do without. There is no one that have had success, no matter how you define it, that did not require discipline, did not require you to change. There are some things you just got to go through, and many people want what God has, but they don't want the instructions to get there. And uh, I want to just keep navigating you to win. And the first thing is to get you off this, this, this big lie the devil brought into the church that materialism defines us. That materialism is the thing that say we win it. Or how many lights or how many people are <coughs> connected to us <coughs> says we win it. That people liking your stuff. Now I know people are paying for to like their stuff. Now that's just foolishness. It really is. Like you 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 seeking something. That has nothing to do with God. I don't preach for people to like it. I am so submitted to God. When God tells me what to talk about. I'm willing to talk about that. And I don't care the cause. I understand the position I put myself in. When I make up my mind. For God I live. And for God I die. Now we, you know, we think about David. When we talk about that. But what about you, that, that, that Goliath on the inside of you? Are you still willing for God I live and for God I die? Because there's a lot of pride that got to go away if, you, if you're talking that talk. Amen. Someone contacted me and said, you know, I, I just feel like you've been talking about me the past few Sundays. And, uh, and I, I, well, I, did, I really don't have you on my mind. When I'm, I'm really, I'm not, I'm not. So, you know, and, you know, so sometimes, this is, what I, this is what I'm trying to tell people. One, there is a spiritual connection. You don't have to agree with me to know we got a spiritual connection. Right. When that word get in your spirit and you got to go home and ponder it. Because I, I'm, I don't know why God give me certain gifts and that's not to be exposed, but just for internal purposes. You know, many of you say, well, that's your opinion. It's not my opinion. You have to believe that. You know, sometimes your stubbornness to make your wrong right 
keeps you from producing God's glory. Amen. And you're not producing God's glory because you got more than what I got. So if I'm going to produce God's glory, I need, to, I need to know when God's talking to me. Most people are only on a, on a parade seeking out who will endorse what I want and what I already believe. Don't come telling me something I'm doing that's wrong. Because I'm better than that girl across the street. I'm, I got a better car than that guy. My house is bigger than that family. All my kids are in college. My kids in the military. No, no, no. See, you think you're something by comparing other people. But you need to know what was God's purpose for my life. Because if God called you to raise a medical doctor, and they are the president of the waste management, you understand? I don't care how much money they make. You're not where God wanted. Come on now. But we're so caught up if they're making good money, then they, they, that's a success. Money, the moment the devil can make you think money identifies your success level, you've already lost. You've already lost. So, so materialism is just for us to enjoy. Do you hear me? It don't control us. It don't motivate us. It's, so we just we just enjoy it. A car is not a car. Don't let nobody lie to you. Now, a car, any car that's running right, can get you from point A to point B. But going there without air condition and windows are stuck, that's a different ride. Don't lie to yourself. A car that needs some suspension work, alignment work, messed up top, ride different. Then a car that just come out the shop and just checked out everything good. Listen to me. Listen to me. God give us things to enjoy. We just enjoy it. Now I told my wife the next set of cars I'm buying, if the kids, I don't want the kids looking at it. Let alone, no, 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 because everything we get that we say just for some, the only reason they don't drive my car because they don't know how to drive no stick. God know how to work it out, you hear me? But but I told them, I'm, I'm picking the next cars out. If they come in the house and say, Dad, that's a nice car, I'm going to slap it. What you do? I told you not to look at it. Don't even look at it. Now that, but that car is not going to identify me. It, it's just simply something to enjoy. I saw it, I like it. But guess what? If I never get it, it ain't gonna change my joy level. Yes. Can I tell you something now? I ain't about to. That's me now. And I'm not telling you to do this. I'm not about to start no separate account to get it neither. And I'm not about to make payments. There's some cars you get, you just don't make payments. You don't. You, there's some cars you get, you don't need to have a mortgage. Come on now, with that type of car. Well, for people to see that people that's caught up in materialism. They gonna see that they're gonna get jealous because that's where their heart is. Some people gonna see that and talk about me. That's where their heart is. You know, you, you'll never get what you're jealous of. You know that, right? Now here's what you gotta understand. Just because I have it don't mean I'm a success. Well, they're they telling me many people with mansions are still getting divorced. You don't know how precious a marriage is when you start valuing, valuing materialism over a successful marriage. That security, that peace, that love, that helps stabilize you. I have a responsibility to raise my family. I can't do that without my wife. I can make money without my wife. But money is not what rules me. I get joy. I was telling somebody, you know, I'm going through some things, you know, with the business, blah, 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 blah. And, and, and they said, I'm so, this, it was a lady, she said, I'm so sorry. And I said, you got to be sorry about that. I enjoy taking care of my family. There's no sorrow about what I got to do. The only problem I got when I got to work is my grandson home and I can't, you know, he lives with us and I can't give him the attention he wants. That's the only problem I got with work right now. That's it. I ain't got no other issue. I, I, I don't have a problem waking up and going to work and coming. I don't have a problem with that. Let me tell you something. Some things you see people with, you think that's their life. People are losing their mind because they can't find love. I was reading this article on this guy who was worth about $100 million and he was miserable. He talked about his depression and all this other stuff because he can't find nobody to love him. Now, the average thing out here 
female will say, I love you, but they see in his money. Go ahead and get you some money and think you're going to find love just like you. That's why they try to marry on the same financial level. Because these females don't care nothing about you. And you know, you look in the mirror and you know you're ugly. <laughs> no, I'm serious. If you know, you got to be honest with yourself. If you know you're ugly and females try to knock down your door, well, you know, you, you know, come on now. You ain't, you, ain't, you ain't got to be no rocket science talking about something they want daddy. No, they don't. <laughs> no, they don't. Don't fool yourself. <laughs> and, and can I tell you something? When you start learning anything God has given, especially across this pulpit, when God has given you, it's for you to better yourself, for you to get off of this materialism, off of this worldly stuff. The, the, the deceitfulness of riches is destroying the house of God. You know, if God promised we won't be hungry, don't come to God telling him, I, you know, I'm, I, I don't want that. Or your mom used to tell me that. I said, I don't want that. She said, you just ain't got hungry yet. She said, I put, I put, it, I put it up. When you get hungry, you're going to want it. Some of y'all done got so big and so out of, out of your head. If God can't give me lobster tails, I'll starve. Well, just starve. Stop then. See, we get caught up in the wrong thing. If you get caught up in the wrong thing, then the next thing you know, you'll start making plans and visions and calling it God. But it's not God. You can make business moves and God has absolutely nothing to do with it. Your financial status, you ain't got to pray for that to grow. You got to work for that to grow. That's why I have a big problem when preachers contact me for money. Why would I give you my grandchildren's money? That makes no sense to me. And what kind of man watch another man go work and when he come home ask for his money? What is wrong with you? So, so now I, I want you to see things. There are things I say that hurt you, but you know it's from God. But you try to make it wrong. Try to make it right. You can't do that. We got this problem with the uh, LGBTQ community. We love everybody, but we can't change truth for nobody. I thought I thought I'd get more amen at least from that side of the room, but yeah, that's all right. But uh, but uh, but but no, no, they got the chant. They got the chant. They say we here, we queer, and we coming for you too. That's the, that's their chant. That when they come up with when they do, they they got a month, the the gay parade month, pride month, something like that. They say we here, we queer. And we coming for purpose grandchild. That's what they said. That's what I'm hearing. Now I'm about to tell you the vicious cycle we about to get in with that. Whatever sin you select, you want, you like, it, it can't change the Bible. That's the first thing. The second thing is, don't try to influence your sin to be a way of life. Amen. Now I'm about to tell you something else. I'm about to tell you something else. It's hard to find wrong in people that's willing to hurt you to protect their children. Now, I'm not saying I'm not promoting nothing, but you need to understand what I'm saying. When you start telling people, I'm coming for your children, people will flip over a fire truck for their children. And then we got, we got one guy, he, he done got his thing cut off, and uh, now he's fighting him and crack a woman's skull. She was stupid for taking the fight. Let me tell you something. Don't believe the hype. You can't do what a man do. You are not as strong as a man. We got different things that step out of the norm. Unless you physically prepare to whoop a man, you can't be the average man. All things be Stop thinking that. You've just never been punched in your face right. Stop thinking you're going to go over. You ain't got no business in no man's face. Everybody that endorsed that fight need to fall dead right now. Crack the lady's skull. Another woman get in there. She believe in the hype. She can do what beat any man or stuff. She got her jaw broke. Some bone up here in her face, her nose. Listen to me. When them men cut their thing off and say, I'm a woman now, don't believe that stuff. You are nothing as a man. So now you want to go fight ladies. Right. No, that kind of, Let me tell you something. Oh, Lord. 
Now, I'm not saying some stuff that's going to cut wrong. But we got to make a stand. Men don't have no business fighting ladies. I don't care what you get cut off, glued on, stuffed in. I don't care about that. So you go around beating up ladies because now you feel like, uh, you know, I can, I can be a, a success if I, if I yoke up a few ladies, beat them up. The man, she, oh, let me get off that before I start cussing. <laughs> All I'm saying is y'all go get your own sport where y'all can fight each other. Yes, yes. Now, I don't care how you identify. Mm -hmm. If I know you're a man mm -hmm. and you touch any female I'm responsible to protect, you leave him here. I'm going to tell you that. And you say, I never have a woman yet. Well, you explain it to Jesus. No, wait. <laughs> when you get there. No, stop that. If you want to change your sex, change it. But don't be coming around trying to make yourself. Now they got that, that, that boy, whatever, whatever it was, swimming now. Now then he, he the women's swim champ or something. <laughs> Serena Williams said she won't even play tennis against a man. Talk about, about all things being equal. She would whoop me. But I ain't going after that ball. I'm going to tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> she said she won't play against a man. It's totally not a uh, competition. You know what Serena Williams, the, this is the number one woman tennis player, was anyway? You know what she said in her prime? She's, if she was ranked with men, she would be number 200. 200! Now you can research that. That's not my opinion. Now I'm about to tell you something. I know it's going to hurt a little bit. The root of the problem is men not being men. Okay. Yes, man. When a little boy wants to look like his mama, because his mama has become his hero. You understand that? And who don't want to be like their hero? Men are becoming just a, a, a problem. You don't make no baby you can't take care of. Amen. You ain't got no business with no new nothing until all your children are solid. Amen. What's wrong with you? Now before y'all get all this jumping and shouting and get tear up, pastor. 30% <clears throat> of men is making all these single mothers. Y'all just humping the same guy. Taking turns. He ringing bells, just slinging it and winging it. 30%. Now, y'all know you don't like what I'm saying that. But if you, if somehow you think I'm wrong, then, and the studies are wrong, you delusional. You have to identify why are we, if it's 10 of y'all, and y'all, y'all, maybe y'all got your baby, why are we picking from the same pool? Now, I'm about to say something, and you take it any kind of way you want. It's not that there's not enough men to marry all the single women. That's not the biggest problem you have. Because the numbers they're saying is not as accurate as they've been telling you. Like, oh, so every, every one woman is 15 men. No, stop. Every woman that's picking from that 30% pool don't qualify for the 70%. And more and more is jumping into the 30% pool that the 70% who don't want you. You got to change what's attracting you to the 30%. Amen. 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 If you don't change that, you can never go to the 70%. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes. Having a man in your son's life means everything. Yes. I know single mothers don't like when I say you can't raise a man. You can raise somebody polite. You can raise a, but if you ain't careful, you'll be raising another woman. No, you can't be all soft and just. You got to let them be responsible. You got and, and let me tell you, can I tell you this? There are things God put in a man that go from man to man. It don't go from, and God don't look there and say, oh, I know I gave it to men. But since the bad, I'm going to give it to you. You can, No. No. The Bible is right. We men have a responsibility to our sons and to our daughters. Don't ever come in my face and you, you, whoo, Jesus. I might almost say half behind, but that most <laughs> but, but you know you ain't right. And we, we men are now creating a, such a bad image. You ain't got, you're irresponsible. You make another baby and you ain't taking care of the ones you got. You're irresponsible. And, and, and it's more than just money to take care of children. 
So if you're going to be a real father, the first thing is the children I got deserve all of my time. Don't nobody tell me I got to go to work. But well, well, okay, so what is that supposed to mean now? You exempt? So if you keep working, you ain't got to be a father? No, because we keep. Well, let me get off that. Y'all got me on the verge of cussing already. So I need to identify why I keep pulling from that 30% pool. I got to stop. Yeah. Whatever's attracting me to that 30% pool, I got to stop. Right. That's it. Because I tell you something, do you know your flesh will destroy you if you don't keep it under control? Yes, you'll eat yourself to death. You'll drink yourself to death. You'll smoke yourself to death. Your flesh is not designed to please God. The Bible says it cannot. Yeah, nah. You already in your flesh want the wrong thing. And nobody had to beat you to eat your dessert. You're the fat subject. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you want it. You want another piece. You got, to you got to put in some discipline. You may like it, but you can't have it. Or you got to, listen, you, you have to have some form of control. The, the biggest problem is you want what you want. And when it comes to pleasing your flesh, your flesh destroy your future because you keep just feed the flesh what it want. Yeah. I don't care if you like him. He ain't got no child. Right. Green eyes should never outweigh whether the Negro can keep a job. Amen. Amen. His car don't mean he gonna love you. Amen. All you do is see yourself pulling up in the cookout with that car, in that car, no. but you'll be gone for the for fourth the fourth July come. <laughs> if you get him, if you get him today. By Labor Day, yeah, he probably got what he want. He gone. He can't make it. He work it. Stop thinking you know what you need, what you want. It got to make sense. I keep saying this. Don't marry because of your feelings. Amen. Write it down. It needs to make sense. If you like to travel and fly all around the world, and, 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 and the other one is scared of planes, but you know somebody got to give in, right? They don't need no fight. Before you get married, you already made a decision. I ain't going to fly no more. Because there ain't no, my sister, you know what I'm saying? Y'all know, come on, well, do what you want. You grow yourself. Come on. We only can go, we're going to vacation together where we can drive to, plane, bus. You got to, listen, if you are vegan and he, come on now. I know I got to cook too many. It got to make sense. I love to laugh and have fun. He likes to look very professional. Sound all proper. You know a person with joy. You, you know, ain't nothing got to be funny. And they be sitting there, they walk in the room, people laugh, and they start laughing. Whoa, what is funny? They want to connect. Somebody miserable. Like, they are all these silly people. <laughs> Just laughing for nothing. Like, what? what is, what's funny? Nothing. No, no. See, if you got joy and you marry somebody, ain't got no joy. You, listen, I'm telling you now, they ain't going to have a problem with you singing around the house. We just gonna keep singing that same song, huh? <laughs> you ain't got no other song to sing. No, it ain't got no joy. You, it needs to make sense. You talk, all you eat is pork, and then he say he don't eat pork. No, come on now. You, I got, we got to iron this out now. We can't be looking at each other eyes talking about pork doesn't matter until y'all get hungry. And you tell him, sorry, I made some smut. He said, don't bring no more pork in this house. What? He, now, now you contemplate leaving. Because you want them pork chops. <laughs> Smothered in gravy. Rice and that, them onions up in that cold cheese. You looking at him and looking at that pork chop. <laughs> he said, he say, don't bring no more pork up in my house. Well, you go. You're going to have to get a change of address. <laughs> and you got a devil in you because you're hungry while you eat right. and dance. You know, you're, you're, come on now. Yeah. He said no more pork. You said, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's the devil. You're a tag Let me leave that alone because I, I see some of y'all got pork in you. It needs to make sense. Our flesh is designed to destroy us. Go to Proverbs 8 and 21. I need you to speak life into your world. I need you to speak life into your world. If you're not talking right. Now most people go from zero to 100 in their affirmations, declarations, and then nothing happens. You cannot speak 
away the process. He's telling his friend, yeah, I'm telling you, I'm going to have my, my own jet. Okay, I hear what you're saying. But if you can't put oil on the bicycle chain, because I'm jets, you know, you can't pull over and fix them in the air. Yeah, that, that got to be right before they take off. You, now I'm, about, I'm not talking about nobody. I ain't looking at nobody calling nobody get crazy. You got that Christmas tree on your dashboard talking about you going to get a plane. Look at what's wrong with you. Them lights mean something. You sit up and tell somebody, I believe God. No, no, let me out while you believe. Let me out. See, see, here's the thing. If, see, now, now, everybody operates different. Some people, that light come on, they're going straight to the dealership. Now, I personally don't, I, I don't, I don't ride with no lights on. Like, the, them, them engine lights. And then sometimes they got different color engine lights. You know, one means, the yellow means get service. The red means you better pull over. You know, they got different ones. They tell you some stuff. Well, you know, I had, when I had my BMW, the BMW called the dealership and tell them what's wrong. The dealership called me and said, you need to bring the car in. Y'all know I'm getting rid of you. You ain't going to just make no bill for me. I got kids, I got wife, grandchildren, a dog. Everybody made me nine car going to start making a bill. Yeah, you got to go, bro. No, so but some of us see them lights. And we just keep me praying. <laughs> you can't pray. You can't pray. You, can't, you think you want some of these nice cars. Till you pull them up in there. Come on. Come on. And they say, hey, 750? We said, no, my name is Sister uh, Miss Clyde. Yeah, no, no. 750 is your name. <laughs> if you ain't got 750, you can roll up that guy. <laughs> 750 for what? We're going to check your oil. Wait. You can what? <laughs> Now listen to me. Listen to me carefully. If I try to skip the process, I'm going to be talking some stuff I ain't ready for. Amen. So you want to go from a tricycle to a private jet, but you won't even put oil on the chain. You're not a responsible person. Some of y'all get your own plane. You think you're backseat dirty now. Oh, Man, the FDA come up on that plane like, I ain't going in there. All right, come on now. How you gonna get roaches on a private jet? <laughs> no, that ain't. Let me leave it alone. Proverbs eight and twenty one. Look what it says. Cause your words pack power. Somebody say my words, my words. pack power. power. Eighteen twenty one. And if I can get the New Living Translation, eighteen twenty one. Because listen, I'm, I'm gonna tell you this. When you speak some things. If you speak over the process, that's why you get no manifestation. When you speak the end result, you need the Holy Spirit to back you up, let you know how to get there. Your words only pack power when your actions support it. Now you can't sit there, I'm telling you, I've been trying it. I lost 20 pounds. I lost 20 pounds. 20 pounds gone. <laughs> Jesus, man. As Jesus walked the water, so fat, walk off me. Come on, come on, fat, go away. When I shake, you go. That fat don't pay you no mind. You understand? What you eat and what you do will support. No matter how many pictures you put up from your high school years. I'm getting back to that side. You're lying to yourself. Your refrigerator, everything in your refrigerator say you a liar. The lettuce done went bad. The, the juice, you don't even know where the parts at to that. There's nothing in your life say you're going back to that side. But you keep confessing something that ain't realistic. You're skipping the process. Oh, God, y'all mad at me now. The tongue can, can bring death or life. The tongue, the tongue can bring what comes from the devil. Your tongue can bring what comes from God. What you speak. Now, here's the thing. What you speak don't pack power to produce something on the outside until it first produces something on the inside. If your tongue don't change what's on the inside, when you say, I'm a good dad, and you have the Holy Ghost, see, that's why the devil brought the Holy Ghost in. This, that's not the Holy Ghost. Right. Woo! What did I know? That's not the Holy Ghost. Right. Laying on the floor, not the Holy Ghost. Right. Can't stand up straight, can't talk, 
the Holy Ghost. But when you say, I'm going to be a good dad, and the Holy Ghost come back, and the Holy Ghost say, well, you know we got to cut some time out from the boys. You know we ain't going to be getting these sneakers like this, so we better, we need to tidy up. We need to clean them now. Don't wait till they get so ugly and, and busted. Talking about you need. No, you need a toothbrush and soap. Keep it right, because we ain't going to be able to. No, 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 no. You know you have to put some money away for their college, because you can't spend more on their sneakers than you're willing to spend on their future. See, that's the Holy Ghost. That's why we don't want him. The Holy Ghost ain't been in a lot of churches in a long time. People been running, sweating, getting musty, and all that stuff, falling off on people, dancing and losing your balance. No, that ain't the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost bring you back to the process. When you go up and say, I'm going to be a millionaire, the Holy Ghost is the one that said, we need to stop wasting money now. And if you're not a waster, you're not a waster. It's not that deep. When you're not a waster, you know you're not a waster when you go to the buffet. I didn't think it would get that, that quiet. I know we got some hungry people in here, but I didn't think it would get that quiet. When you're not a waster, when you go to the buffet, I still don't waste because I'm not a waster. When, you know, I see people, I just see their habits, and I know they'll never, because when you're a waster, poverty is going to always be in your life. You know, my mama, when I was a kid, my, my mama used to, you know, had me to buy the toiletries. That was my responsibility. I had, we didn't, everybody didn't have their own toothpaste like we got today. Today, everybody got their own toothpaste. On. We had one bathroom, one thing of toothpaste, one bar of soap. You know what I'm saying? We, had, we didn't know nothing about no this other stuff. And the soap we bought was the soap on sale. So if it made you itch, you just going to scratch until the unitched soap get on sale, all right? I don't know, when my, before I was buying the toiletries, I used to put my whole hand in an arm in a cast to wipe my behind. <laughs> oh yeah, we go, we go, we go. <laughs> Why well, I had so much toiletries? Why well, I put so, I used to pull that thing more like, <laughs> that made me holler. Ball it up. I would even blow my nose, <coughs> throw all that in the garbage. I didn't know what it was about pulling two or three strips off, folding it, blowing your nose, put it in. No, I'm gonna pull this that ain't no snot gonna get on me. Definitely ain't no dookie gonna get on me. So I got this whole arm, <laughs> this whole arm is a cat for one wife. And then she made me start buying the toiletries. Yeah, but when I wasn't buying the toiletries, I made that, I don't know if they got that commercial out, where they used to make the S on the toothpaste brush. Well, I used to do that all the time. Sometimes I mess up, rinse the toothbrush off, start over. No. Like, come on now. So we get that, it was, I think it was the aqua, the one that was the multicolored one. And when, you, you know, I, when I finally learned how to make that S on there, I brush my teeth. Now, you know, when I start, you listen to me. First off, you don't throw away the, the broke soap. Not when I had to start paying for it. You put it up at the back. We had a little bathroom, the tub, and you put it up at the back of the tub. And then at, at, after you get enough up there, you scrape it all together, run your hand under some warm water, and you make a soap ball. Now you got about three, four different types of soaps up in there, but it, it worked. Right, listen to me. I learned so much when I had to be responsible for my actions. Now you go ahead and let me walk in that bathroom and see some soap in the garbage can. Lord, I'm telling you, you think Jesus got off the cross and slapped somebody. <laughs> mom, mom, mom. When she had her door closed, mom, mom, he was through the soap in the back in the, in the in the bathroom. I know she did it. Yeah, because you ain't gonna be throwing away my money. See, when you don't see what it's costing you, you constantly being wasteful. And, and some of us raised our kids to just take our place. You know, welfare was a generational thing. No, I'm, I'm serious. I don't know what it is now. I ain't research, you know, them people. You know, don't get mad at me. But they would get an apartment, learn how to get over on the system. They teach it to their kids. When you get married, come on, y'all already know what the deal is. Don't change your name. Because you're going to lose your apartment. 
So you're gonna have to keep this name so you can get your food stamp, blah 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 blah. And then and then if, if you had children and you wanted to get some money for them children, now you can't track it to the daddy because you and the daddy still might be dating. But you got to eliminate him so that I can get this. Come on, we they learn how to work the system. Well, well, let, let me tell you something. That's not what God is looking for you to pass on to your kids. Yeah, come on. So you speaking something that there's no internal work. Your words, you speak life, speak words into, uh, speak life into your words by coming to truth with who I am. The tongue can bring death or life. If you want life, that which comes from God, I'm going to have to be truthful. I came to live in denial looking for God to do something explosive in my life. I can't keep a job because I'm lazy. You ain't got to like your job. Your job has a purpose. It's to give you money. You go there to get the money. Are they still giving you the money? No, the only time you get mad is if they stop giving you the money. I don't play with people's money. If, I, if, I, if you work for me and I got to pay you, I'm a, the only time I never pay nobody is when they get slick with their mouth. If I owe you money and I don't pay you, the moment you try to be a big dog, you don't get my money. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I need you to come do that. Wait. And you know where I'm at. I'm, you know what time the route leave. I'm going to be running the route. I'll see you there. We, we can uh, Come on. So, so now, now you telling me you something you not. And I need to prove it to you. So now you're supposed to get paid on Friday. You might not get paid the Wednesday or Thursday or the next week. I don't even know how bad you are. If you listen to me, if you want to be something great, I got to allow the process to come before the end result. Hold on, let me, let me finish this because y'all ain't getting in the mind anyway. If I want what comes from God, when I speak the end result, the Holy Ghost takes me back to the process. If I don't have the Holy Ghost, then I need somebody to tell me the process because success is not a spiritual thing, financial success. <clears throat> you having a better life has nothing to do with you running around the church. Most the deepest people in church is usually the brokenest people. No success financially, nowhere. Hi, yeah, my, my, my. God say somebody go help me with my rent. Yeah, my, 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 la, 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 la. <laughs> you, 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 la, 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 la. <laughs> no, you, you so deep. You deep. You gotta work. No, I'm saying we had church mothers. All they have was their little social security. And then they come in begging, giving them weak text. I ain't had no food to eat, but I'm just believing God. Mama, what you saying? <laughs> you want somebody to take it. Then after church, everybody giving mama a little cash. She coming back next month. Come on now. Now you're like, what kind of testimony is this? <laughs> I ain't had but a little can of sardine last night, but it didn't take my joy. Mama, why are you telling us what you ate last night? What are you hoping to get? That now, now, but that's the same mother praying all day. Won't let you up off the altar. You go to get up, they push you back down. You say, I got, I got, I got what I came for. No, you ain't, you ain't got nothing. Sit there. That's the same, the same one. They used to call it revival. Yeah, make you stand in front of Jesus. Say, save Jesus, say to Jesus, say to Jesus. Say, we been there for a whole hour. Well, what's wrong with Jesus? I mean, like they you just up there and say, Save me. Now, now I know y'all church was deep. My church was just, you know, Save me, Jesus, Save me, Jesus. We sat in there a whole hour. I'm not lying to you. Right, right. Save me, Jesus, Save me, Jesus, Save me, Jesus, Save me, Jesus, Save me, Jesus. And the only way you're going to leave if you put on a show. You don't put on no show, you got to stay. Save me, Jesus, Save me, Jesus, Save me, 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 that's it, baby. That's it, baby. And then you go, you go sit down. You don't put on no show. You can't go. Sit right here. And we don't don't be talking about tearing for the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost was the slowest moving thing in all the earth when I was a kid in church. And then we had to come back and revive it again. Get them kids up here. They need the Holy Ghost. No, no, I already got. No, you ain't. Come on up here. And then I always had to come up there. Feel me, Jesus. Feel me, Jesus. Feel me, Jesus. Feel me. You better, you better put on a show. Now, if you first, 
you get this out. Now, everybody start acting up at the same time. They're going to be like, no, y'all, no, 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 y'all ain't got nothing. Come on back up here. You got to be first. Try to cry. Little spit come out. Yeah, then you go to your seat. Then you be watching the rest of them. We ain't had no games, no phone. No. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, church was a joke. Eh? Yeah, and, and, and I'm, I'm trying to tell you, if you if you really going to grow in God, then I need somebody to tell me the process of what I need that's not trying to be deep, spiritual, and have no success. Y'all mad. Last verse, and then I'm going. Galatians 6 and 9. When it comes to speaking, don't ever speak over the process. Now, the biggest, two of the biggest discourage us, discouraging things that causes us never to reach our goal is the reward is not enough. Meaning, what I'm going to get out of this, don't push me to go and give my all. And the results is not fast enough. Those two things will stop you, especially on a diet. No, I'm telling you, like, I mean, like, if I went to bed hungry, I'm looking to get on that scale tomorrow and lose 20 pounds. <laughs> I ain't lost 20 pounds. The scale broke. Diets don't work. You know, I'm big boned. I got all kinds of things because I'm, I'm going I'm to eat what I want to eat because I'm not going to be up here with this foolishness. <laughs> And you know, y'all, as y'all learn yet, holding your breath, don't take away no pounds. You get on the scale, you, you, you know, hold your breath with your stomach in. Most of us got to do it to see the scale, but we, and we look down, it's still the same. No, listen to me. If you, if you get to the point that you don't, if you allow to go, right now, somebody say, next week, if you lose two inches off your waist, I'll give you $10,000. Child, somebody brought, bring us a sandwich, we punch them clean in the face. <laughs> Ten thousand dollars? Man, I ain't hungry. I'm just thinking about that next week's Sunday. Ooh, Jesus. Won't he do it? Child, you start, because you know you ain't eating nothing. And I'm going to do a setup too. I'm going to do at least one or two of them. I'm going to do a jack. I'm going to jump. Then I'm going to jump. And then I'm going to do a jack. But I'm gonna lose them two inches. What I got to do? You know, you know when you're lazy, you call everything exercise. You be sitting up there doing this. It take it take energy to do. Yeah. You sitting up in there, you supposed to be cooking. You doing squats? That's about all you gonna do now. If I go down too low, ain't no somebody going to come get me. You go there. Come on now. Once that butt drop about four or five inches lower, you stop. You. <laughs> just go on down and get out the way you're supposed to. Don't you try to be gonna break up something. You try to you go all the way down there like that. You know you ain't got to go. You go up there you want to. You hear that stuff cracking and popping. <laughs> oh, that stuff real. I'm telling you, y'all sit there. Y'all think it's a joke. When you get up in age, you don't be going down like that. Sit up there trying to make them video. Let me get up there. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessings if we do not give up. Listen, so if, if I don't have nobody to offer me $10,000, I got to change the reward and then I got to make it mean something to me. And my reward can't be so far because if I don't get results in time, I open the door for the devil to come discourage me. So if, I, if my goal is to lose a half a pound instead of 20 pounds, guess what's going to happen? I'm going to have success sooner. The results is going to cause and motivate me to keep going. And all, listen, them halves going to add up. You got to understand, if it takes me too long to reach my goal, the devil going to come to discourage me. You need to know it's all about you and what you're going to do. Speak words that's going to change you. I'm going to be a good wife. And the Holy Ghost is going to say, well, you know, you're going to do something about that slick mouth. You ain't ready for marriage if you're lazy. No. Oh, Lord. I didn't get that. I didn't know that many people here was married. But, but if you ask any woman that's been married more than 10 minutes, they tell you, 
He's going to want you to do something for him when you don't want to do it. It's hard to find joy in doing something when you're lazy. Child, are you ready to cuss him out? Did, 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 you, did, you, did you, you didn't want it while I was downstairs. <laughs> you wait till I come upstairs and now you want what? Oh, ain't nothing wrong with your hands. Ain't nothing wrong with your feet, your hands. Well, you can't, you can't go give me nothing to eat? No. <laughs> don't, you, don't let you have a little piece of job, too. Boy, you got a piece of job. Well, they talk back to you. They, they say, can you give me something to eat? I can tell you where it's at. <laughs> he said, well, is it any more, is it any more of the, the dirty rice left? I don't know. We're going to have to look in the refrigerator. That's where we keep it at. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm telling you, God told me he was married, I think he said three years or five years. He said his wife has never massaged nothing on him. I don't, you know, I didn't tell her, but you know what I'm thinking. You need to get rid of her. What's she good for? Wow. I said, she don't massage your hands? And he's like, no, that's just not, that's, that's not what we do. Bro, that's, that's, that's important. No, man, her hands need to be on you. Now, you know, some of women are like, oh, what, what is he doing that? No, man, you, listen, don't, if she don't, she don't, what, what, what does she do? <laughs> like, I mean, <laughs> as a man, if you don't know how to, having a good man requires a lot of work. Now, he, he don't need to hang around me because he's going to mess up his marriage. I got men that come over and they, they when it's time to eat, they wives don't look at no plates, no nothing. You, boy, what? You, what you? Let them sit there and act slow if you want to. Right. Yeah, let me get some of the cabbage. And uh, she be looking at, <laughs> oh, you, you acting new, huh? <laughs> no, she get on, she go over there and whisper in his ear. I know she's saying something mean. Don't make me slap you and afraid your friend. <laughs> yeah, like that. Like I'm serious, women don't even. Now I'm not. I know you. I ain't talking about nobody. I'm talking about the, the, somebody else. They won't even fix their husband. Play. You hang around me. My wife treat me good. Then you go home looking for your wife to do that. You y'all gonna be fighting. Cause you know you ain't got that kind of woman. She gonna cuss you clean out. Then you talking about you don't want no paper play. Well, do you want to do dishes? Cause if you ain't doing dishes. You better get this hefty and go your. Now, see, I don't eat out of paper plates. I know now you eat out of whatever work at your house. That's what you need to do. But you got to understand if you want something, understand what you what it takes to get it. Don't get no good woman because you you got muscles. You get stupid women because you got one muscles. Ain't nobody even want to marry you because you got a muscle. You thought that? I, I'm just saving them some gym time. You know what I mean? I don't, need, I don't need all the musicians all up in the gym, tired. No, a good man don't mean muscles. A good man, have a, he have a stronger ear than he got a bicep. A heart to let go of his own nature to please the woman he claims he loves. If you're not willing to change for her, it's because you don't love her. I don't listen to my wife because I'm scared of her. And her crazy country family. They come up here if they want to. I ain't scared of her cousins and her, her brother. I ain't scared of none of them. That's not why I listen to her. I listen to her because I love her. Love make you do what's right. Love make you answer that phone. I tell people all the time, I don't care what I'm doing. That woman go crazy. I tell her I'm on an important call. You don't switch over? Oh, you definitely, somewhere you ain't got no business. Oh, all hell about to break loose. <laughs> why you answer the phone? Where was you, where was you going? Where was you? Where's your locator? Your locator? Every day they go crazy. No, I be on the phone. I said, Mr. 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 Obama, I got, I got, you got to hold on. Hey, you got to, nigga. Hey, what's up? You got to, I don't care who I put the call in. She don't care. Could be trying to save the world. She don't care. Switch over. Well, I don't switch over because you know what I mean. It's my phone. I pay my own phone bill. No, you know what I'm we submit to whom we love. Not because you don't threaten me talking about Ali. I get your garbage bag. I'm going to change because I love you. You tell me what you don't like. You tell me what you like. 
I got to now change my life to fit your life, to make you better. A good man gonna elevate you. A good man take your bad credit and make it good. A good man gonna get you to the place that you proud of what God has done in your life through him. He ain't increasing you, he ain't elevating you. He ain't from God, that's for sure. Talking about something, but look at his hands. Okay. You sit there chasing hands and feet. You, 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 now you well, go on, do what you want to do. I see somebody else. Know what it takes to get what I want. Holy Ghost, help me with the process. Because I ain't getting what I'm calling in unless I work the process. You need to learn how to be a good man now, not when you get a woman. Learn how to swallow your pride now. Learn, listen to me. If you think, you know, you know my, my wife just never. She, she don't really have people that can help her because not many people are married to a man that's right all the time. So she don't know how to deal with that. But I'm right all the time, but sometimes I got to let her feel like she's right. And so you, you got to change. Sometimes I come home from work, working hard, and I come home to cook dinner because I want to let her know I know what you're going through. You ain't my slave. No, my wife will give me anything I want, but my love won't let her. Same way she won't let me wash clothes. We sit in her closet, her closet, twice the size of my closet, and she sit up in there with three, four bags of laundry. I said, we can fold clothes together, like make a date out of it. She won't, she won't let me fold clothes. I'm trying to tell you something. You, you, you want to get to the place. You love someone so much, you got to stop them. From, from loving you too much. That's who you want. Somebody that sit back and just accept it all, they don't love you, I'm telling you that. You know, I, I post one time, it's one thing to have somebody you willing to give your life for. It's a whole other scenario when they sit back and watch you give it. You need somebody that's gonna stop you. My wife can't work herself to death for me. I won't allow her. I love her too much. Tell me, how much love you got in your relationship that you will not. I don't care how bad I want something. I will not kill you to get it. If you want what you call it for, you got to be willing to go through what you got to go through to get it. Father, thank you for this word of truth. I pray God the process is elevated in our intellect that we can not only know, but it motivate us to move forward so that we can produce your glory in the earth. Absolutely no weapon formed against the destiny you have for me will prosper. I speak change in my life. I speak growth in my life. Not for the outward appearance, but for the inward work. I'm a better child of God. I'm a better husband, a better wife, a better mother, a better father. I'm open to learn so that I can grow. My stubbornness will not interfere with my growth ever again. My arrogance will not stop me from hearing and obeying your word. Teach me more of your ways, O oh God, that your precepts will override my understanding and my comprehension of the ways of life. I will trust you. I will obey you that you can come and shine through me in the earth to produce your glory. Do it, O oh God. I'll give you praise. I'll give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen.